Hello, Peak Radar fans. You are seeing here a detailed look at low relief sculpture, which is a fairly unusual art form. And this evening at the Cultural Office of the Pikes Peak Region, we are opening the first solo show in the United States of Jeremiah Welsh's low relief sculptures. Uh, so here, just take this. Hi, everyone. I'm Angela with the Cultural Office. This is Jeremiah Welsh. We are so excited to introduce you to this artist fairly new to our community. Uh, for his first show in the United States uh, to show a retrospective of Jeremiah's low-relief sculptures. Okay, can you just tell us what low-relief is? What does that mean? Uh, well, low-relief is basically a, an art form that essentially it hopes to establish implied space versus measurable space. And that is something that is quite unusual. Yeah. Um, although we do often see it every day on our coins. So it is a part of our lives, but very rarely does it seem to show up in, um, in the gallery setting. Yeah, so it is unusual, and so is the mind of Jeremiah Wells. Some of the imagery in the show is just enchanting, something you'd never find on a coin. So we're going to give you a private tour of the show right now and talk to you a little bit about the process behind low-relief <coughs> sculpture. All right, so we were looking... At this set of sculpture, sculptures, Jeremiah, that you did in Tokyo. Uh, and these were part of your solo show there, yes? That is correct, yeah. Can you tell us how you, how you make these? What are we seeing? Well, the sculptures actually begin with a sized panel that is skinned with clay. Um, and then at that point, a reductive process begins where the composition is essentially established within that um, skin of clay. It, it does work in both an additive and reductive uh, manner. But so you're carving into it, but you're also kind of building, building off. It up with, and they're with, really thin, aren't they? Look they are quite thin. The idea being, um, because I was trained in a, in a sand-driven foundry, all the edges are drafted so that uh, the pieces will pop out of the, the casting sands. But essentially, these works are in cast resin. They are the patterns that are generated after the clay sculpture is completed. Uh, these days, I actually work with a lost wax foundry. So these images um, are actually being translated by a, a very different, the lost wax process, ultimately into bronzes. Right, so what you're seeing, everyone, is are resins that can become bronzes. If you want to own a piece of Jeremiah's sculpture, then you would you would commission him, right, to do the um, to, to pour it in bronze for you. This is a great example of the perspective. Talk to us about how you create perspective like this, like this uh, heron looking up at the hot air balloon in such a thin panel. Well. This is a nice piece that demonstrates the, the capacity of low relief to function as essentially a non-measurable space. It is driven by dynamic perspective. The foreground, this is not an etching. It is very much a sculpture. The foreground is a thicker substrate, basically, I I than show you guys that here. The, the, the background. Um, but essentially, you are generating through light and shadow uh, the sense of a virtual space that is not measurable in the same manner that a full round sculpture yeah, is, is look measurable. At the jellyfish floating here. Some of what I love about your work is what you choose to sculpt. Um, some of these images, hot air balloons and jellyfish and alligators, they're not, they're not things that we always see. And when you choose subject matter that we do see, like here, a uh, flower and bee, there's still something really unique about your eye. Yeah. Are you doing that on purpose? I, I suppose that I am. I, I, the one thing that is very much a part of what I am trying to communicate is essentially kinetic kinetic environments, energy-driven environments, torsion-driven environments, and, and the reality that these are surrounding us. 
there is such energy um, in the world, and especially for myself in nature, I, I, I love the natural world. It's very much my sanctuary, and I do hope to preserve a part of it um, in my own unique way. Yeah. A lot of people who live in Colorado also love the natural world, so uh, welcome. <laughs> welcome yeah. to Colorado. So uh, you're in an incredible community and an incredible arts community. Here you're seeing uh, some bronzes, so some finished pieces, and this piece is particularly special. Would you tell us about it? Well, this piece, um, it's called Mayflies and Trout Rise Okutamagawa. Um, I could tell you a backstory, but the, the, the main, um, the, the nice thing about this piece is that it was juried into the national show last year. The um, Nas National Sculpture Society's 83rd annual awards competition. That is yeah. correct, the Brook Green Gardens. And it really was um, an honor to have that piece included in that show. Brooklyn Gardens are a remarkable, remarkable place um, to visit, and the show is a very competitive one. Yeah. So I feel quite lucky to have had that piece in there. Yeah. Well, I'm going to flip the camera around, and we'll here. Get here. All right. So come tonight, uh, August fourth. Uh, Friday, August 4th is the opening of this show that runs through the end of September here at the Cultural Office of the Pikes Peak Region. We're adjacent to the Gallery of Contemporary Art. And see for yourself the lower leaf sculptures of Jeremiah Welsh and get to meet him. He'll be here tonight telling people about his process and about the inspiration for some of the images that you've seen here. There's a story with everyone, as there always is with artwork. And we hope you'll come and learn more about them either tonight or through the end of the show in late September. Thanks so much, Jeremiah. Thank you. Hope to see you there.